It began with a revolt by officers in Spanish Morocco. The year is 1936. Rural workers in Spain lived in some of the worst poverty in Europe. Some of the regions were seeking independence and vehemently opposed the king. Spain's political fabric was being torn apart and the country was on a crossroads to moving either towards communism or fascism. It was a trying time and earlier that year a leftist government was elected in office. Some right-wing military officers feared a Marxist takeover and gathered support for a coup. It began in Spanish Morocco. And the rebels quickly gained control over parts of northern and southern Spain. They expected an easy handover of power, but in Madrid they were met with fierce resistance. And in Barcelona their general failed. It took a few days until the attempted coup reached a stalemate. The rebels now had control over one quarter of the land and several key cities in the south, with the government controlling the rest, as well as 75% of the industry. This is the start of the Spanish Civil War, how it unfolded and ended with hindsight. quickly became an international affair. The global community saw a struggle of democracy against fascism, Christian civilization against communism. The rebels were supported by Nazi Germany and fascist Italy, whereas the Republican government could count on support from the Soviet Union and to a lesser extent Mexico. Many Western governments signed the Non-Intervention Acts and it made it impossible for Spain to buy arms on the international market. But nonetheless, some 40,000 foreign men and women traveled to Spain to fight against fascism. Americans, French, Soviets and amongst them was Ernest Hemingway. He wrote a book about an American volunteer and he wrote several articles that reported on the conflicts. The leader of the rebels, Francisco Franco, was stationed in the Canary Islands. From there, he called upon the military leaders to support the uprising. When Spanish Morocco was captured, he went there to prepare the army of Africa to be brought to the mainland. Francisco Franco was a military prodigy. He joined the army at age 15 and his service in Morocco earned him 13 medals for leadership, discipline and bravery. He became a general when he was only 33 years old, making him the youngest general in Europe after Napoleon Bonaparte. Spain was preparing for the next big offensive. The Republicans and the rebels secured their territories, going after their political opponents without mercy or respect for life. What followed was three years of bloody war for control over Spain. In a nutshell, the rebel forces moved the army of Africa to Algeciras with logistical support from Nazi Germany. From there, they continued their advance towards the north they quickly captured eastern Andalusia and Extremadura. But their advance came to a halt when they neared Madrid. The Republican militias put up a heroic stance. And around this time, the International Brigade of Volunteers gained momentum and strength and helped the Republican defense of Madrid. Germany, Italy, in Portugal provided arms and airplanes to the rebels and Italy had 70,000 troops in Spain who Mussolini claimed to just be volunteers. The weight of the war then mostly shifted towards the north, where the iron and shipbuilding industry fell into the hands of the rebels, along with major cities. In Barcelona, 
the Republican government was facing internal struggles. In May that year, this culminated with violent clashes in the streets of Barcelona, which weakened the Republican government. The rebels then managed to break through the defense line in Aragon. Reaching the east coast of Spain, they captured the dams of Leda, which provided much of Catalonia with electricity. They continued their march on Valencia, but they weren't successful in capturing the city. The French government, in the meantime, sent 18,000 tons of war material to the Republican army in Catalonia, setting the pretext of the biggest battle of the Civil War. But even here, after some initial successes, the rebel army proved to be superior. And the rebels eventually managed to take Barcelona. This was the last breath of the Republican army. With the rebels now preparing to take Madrid once again and heavily outnumbering the government troops, the leaders of the Republican army turned on each other to broker a better peace deal. The rebels entered the city. Only three days later, they controlled all of Spanish territory. The war was over and the Republicans surrendered unconditionally. Francisco Franco, from this moment onwards, ruled Spain as its dictator. Tens of thousands of Republicans were imprisoned for their political affiliation and thousands were sent to their death. Catholicism essentially became the only religion that was tolerated and Catalan and the Basque languages were banned outside the home. Franco largely kept Spain out of World War II, but he did send tens of thousands of volunteers to fight alongside the Germans against the Soviet Union, and he also provided logistical support from mostly the German Navy. After World War II, Spain faced diplomatic and economic isolation, but as the Cold War heated up, he became an important ally to the West in the fight against communism. He served as the leader of Spain until his death in 1975. Have you heard about the Carnation Revolution in Portugal? Click on the video on the left if you want to learn more about this momentous moment in Portuguese history.